Hello and welcome to the second half in this topic, in this data representation topic about how numbers are represented in three different numbering systems. Um, in the previous half we looked at uh, binary mainly and today we're looking at, or in this video we're looking at hexadecimal. So let's skip all the binary things and go to um, hexadecimal. So hexadecimal is a base 16 numbering system and that means that it has 16 digits to represent every number possible. Um, so instead of two digits in binary and 10 in binary or decimal, it has 16. So we, we use 0 to 9 as our normal first 10 digits, and then we use the first five letters of the uh, first six sorry letters of the alphabet um, to do the rest. So A equals 10, B equals 11, C equals 12, D equals 13, E equals 14, and F equals 15. You got to remember that it goes up to 15 because we have 16 digits in total, and zero counts as a digit. When I first learned this, I completely forgot about zero, and it confused me so much because I was using G um, instead of as as the last one because I thought it went up to 16. It does, but we use zero as well. You got to make sure you remember that. And sometimes we call it hex. We shorten hexadecimal to hex because it's easier to say and easier to write. And it's mainly used by computer programmers to represent binary numbers because each he hex digit represents a nibble. So for one hex digit, it equals four binary bits. And so less notations are needed to represent the same number. Essentially, it's computer programmers being a bit lazy and it shortens huge numbers. So this huge binary number, which is equal to 12,500, is far shorter in hex. And this gets exponential. As this gets longer and longer longer, this gets slightly longer. So it really does help um, programmers. So essentially, it's used to shorten things. And so we're going to look at how we convert between binary to hex and hex to binary. Um, yes, so. Uh, if we do an example of 31 into hexadecimal, 31 in binary into hexadecimal, um, I yeah. So I can explain my thought process in this because I haven't actually written any help down. I make these powerpoints quite a few. You know, I think this was two weeks before I'm recording this now, so I don't totally remember this. So um, what you do, you first do your columns. So the way it works is it's the columns is 16, and you are only going to be asked to do um, two dig digit, I can't say digit for some reason, two digit um, hexadecimal numbers, you don't need to do a third one, the specification does say that, and how it works is you do, it's base 16, so you do 16 to the power 0, and anything to the power 0 equals 1, any number to the power 0 equals 1, which is why all numbering systems start with using 1, um, and then you do 16 to the power 1, which is equal to 16, and the next one along, if you had a third column, which we're not going to do, it'd be 16 to the power 2, which is something like 156 or something, I'm not 100% sure. Um, you, but you don't need to know. Um, so we, what we do, my thought process is firstly the first column. So we got to do we got to do thirty one divided by sixteen, and clearly sixteen only goes once into thirty one. If it went twice, that'd be thirty two. So it goes in once. And to find our remainder, we have to do thirty one minus however many we've done, and that's one one lots of sixteen, and that equals fifteen. And then simply, um, the way you represent 15 times 1 in hexadecimal, so the way you represent 15 times 1 is with, um, so this is 10, this is 11, this is 12, this is 13, this is 14, this is 15. So F is used to represent 15. So simply, this is 1 and F. And that is our hexadecimal two-digit number or number and letter combination, however you want to look at it. Okay, right now we've got a harder version, and that is with a larger number, so 210 into hexadecimal. Okay, so we use our columns the same, 1 and 16, for the same reasoning above. And what we do is, firstly, like I, we did before, we've got to divide 210 by 16. And 210 divided by 16 is let me just check on the calculator to make sure I'm being right. Two hundred and ten divided by sixteen is thirteen, and you are allowed to calculate it. Uh, actually, you're not allowed to calculate it in your exam, but you can do that with long division or however you like to divide. Um, so twenty two hundred ten divided by sixteen is thirteen. Uh, sorry, let's not 
we can't write that, no. Equals 13. I've got to be careful again. And 13, as we mentioned in hexadecimal, is represented by D. So instead of me writing 13 very stupidly, you write D. And then we have a remain. Uh, we've got to work out for remainder. So we do 210 minus 16 times 13, and that equals. Um, sorry, yeah, that equals two if you work that out because 16 times 13 is 208, and 210 minus 208 is two. And two in hexadecimal is simply the number the number two. So, 210 in hexadecimal is D2. Okay, let's move on. Let's have a look at converting hex to binary. Not binary, we're looking at that next. That's a spelling mistake, unfortunately. Um, these things happen when you're rushing these sometimes. Uh, so, 27 in hex. So, this is 27 in hex. It looks like a, a normal number, but it's in hex into binary. So, first things first, we've got to write it in. So, like binary, we write it in first to seven and we do our columns so one and sixteen and what this is saying is we've got sixteen times two plus one times seven you're timesing up or down but you're timesing the column headings by the rows and sixteen times two is thirty two and one times seven is seven which makes it thirty nine that is your answer this is far easier to do it this way because you're literally times it instead of dividing no one really likes dividing, but timesing isn't quite so bad. So if we've got to look at 9c. And this is a good point, by the way, and that I might not have mentioned. Uh, you can have hexadecimal numbers clearly from your 15 units, and um, that aren't, they don't include letters. That's a good point. You don't don't get confused because you don't have letters in. Don't assume that because it's like this, it means binary. It should be quite clear in your question. Um, okay, so we do 16, 1, 16 times 9 plus 1 times C and C represents 12 oops there we are going off my screen there 16 times 12 um, 16 times 9 is 160 minus 16 which is 144 plus 12 which equals 166. Nice and easy, I think. That's possibly three or four marks that are really not that hard to gain. Okay, now we've got to look at converting straight between binary and hexadecimal equivalents of the same number. And they're interlinked. They're, it's really clever how this works. I really like it. It's good when you finally understand it. So a nibble can represent the binary numbers 1 to 15. For example, 15 is uh, 1111. Four ones, if I said five, uh, four ones match on nibble. Nibble is four bits. And as we know, these are our headings for binary. And we're literally just adding them up. Eight times one plus four times one, eight plus four plus two plus one equals 15. So that's nice and simple. We, we covered this in the last video. And these four bits, this nibble, can also be represented by one hex digit as it has 15 positive digits. It has uh, one to 15. So if we're working for the nibble 1011 in hex is this. You do so we've got our binary number here and we're working out what this binary number means in binary first so 8421 8 plus 2 plus 1 because 4 times 0 is 0 is 11 and we take this 11 and we straight away convert it so we know that 11 in hex is B 10 is A, B is 11, C is 30, uh, 12 etc so we know that 11 in hex is B and that's our answer 1011 in hex is B because of this. Really clever. Let's have a look at a slightly harder example that also represents it slightly better. So we've got a byte here, we've got 8 bits, 00111011. So convert it into hex, um, dodgy animations there, but we have our binary numbers here, we have our column headings, and important, you have to look at the nibbles individually. You can't then do um, 16, 32, 64, 128. You've got to act as if they're two different unities, which is one of the reasons why they have a gap in between them, because you look at them individually. But if you look at binary, you look at them together. If you look at hex, you look at them individually. So we've got to look at them individually like we did here. We add up what they mean. So 8 plus 2 is 10, and 2 plus 1 is 3. 
So, uh, what this means is, as we know, 3 in hex is simply 3, and 10 in hex is A. And so, to da, our byte in hex is 3A. So I believe that makes sense. Um, you know, I'm going to pause this slide and look over it again. If not, there are plenty of videos on the internet about this, but this is tailor-made to your course if you're following the OCR GCSE course. Um, so anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Next up, we're looking at the character section in this topic, in this chapter, I should say. Um, so hopefully I'll see you in that video. Thank you.